Hello, this is Intermediate Logic, Mastering Propositional Arguments. This textbook and video series is meant to follow after introductory logic, the fundamentals of thinking well in the Canon Logic series from Canon Press. In this lesson, we're going to talk about three things. What intermediate logic is, the scope and sequence of this textbook and curriculum, and also how propositional arguments relate to what you've already learned in introductory logic. Remember that logic is the art and science of reasoning. Reasoning means drawing conclusions from other information. Logic is the science and art that teaches us how to draw conclusions from other information. This means reaching conclusions correctly, getting valid conclusions, and ultimately applying logic to real life arguments. Logic can also be thought of as a symbolic language that represents the reasoning inherent in other languages. All languages, by virtue of being languages, represent the process of reasoning by means of words. So what logic does is strip away much of the poetry and variety of language along with some of the rhetoric of language and leaves you with the form of reasoning inside the language. To a certain extent, it's like a person in biology class doing a dissection of a frog. They peel away the skin, they peel away the muscles, and leave you with the frog skeleton. Thankfully, logic doesn't actually smell like formaldehyde or deal with any dead things except dead philosophers. So the analogy breaks down. But when you're left with the skeleton of this frog, you see something that you would have had a much harder time seeing before. You see that it's a quadrupedal vertebrate. Now, besides being dead, the frog has lost a lot of what makes it a frog, but you've gained clarity with regard to its structure. Logic does that same sort of thing. It removes a lot of the language, but leaves you with the structure of reasoning. And that's the value of intermediate logic. <clears throat> so let's see one example of that as we apply it to an argument you may be familiar with. This is from C.S. Lewis's The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe where two of the children, Peter and Susan, are talking to Professor Diggory Kirk. In this scene, you get the famous line, logic, why don't they teach logic in these schools? Here's the professor's argument. Either your sister, Lucy, is telling lies, or she is mad, or she is telling the truth. You know that she doesn't lie, and it is obvious that she is not mad. For the moment then, and unless any further evidence shows up, we must assume that she is telling the truth. So what logic does is take that fully written, fully fleshed out dialogue and strip away a lot of it and leave you with the bare form of reasoning behind the professor's words. You would represent it this way. Your sister is telling lies. That's the variable L. She is mad, the variable M. She is telling the truth, the variable T. So we write that out as L or M or T. The little V's are or symbols. Don't worry about that. We'll learn it all later. She does not tell lies and she's not mad, not L and not M. The big dot is an and. Therefore, she must be telling the truth, therefore T. The three dots are the therefore symbol. You remember that already from intro logic. So that is a symbolic representation of Professor Kirk's argument. We've removed the rhetoric and removed the poetry, and we've been left with the bare form of reasoning. But although we have lost what makes it a story, we've gained clarity. And the clarity we've gained just now will allow us to analyze and manipulate arguments in a powerful way. Also, when I say manipulate, I don't mean like an evil mastermind with a whip and a cape. Perhaps imagine instead the huge computers that control the manufacture of some enormous spaceship. Logic shows you where the buttons are that do things you need to know how to do. Next step for this introduction. I just want to remind you again of the structure of logic. So remember that logic has two main branches, informal logic and formal logic. Informal logic does things with terms, statements, and fallacies, and we learned all about that in introductory logic. Now, formal logic also had two main branches, deduction and induction. Inductive arguments are arguments of likelihood or probability based on experience. Deductive arguments are arguments of certainty based upon axioms, which are statements assumed to be true. Deductive arguments themselves are broken down into categorical and propositional logic. Categorical logic is what we learned about in introductory logic. And now at last, we're at the other branch. We're going to learn all about propositional logic in this textbook and this video series. Propositional logic can itself be broken down into several branches. And this again will give us structure to see where we're going to go together in these lessons. First, we're going to start learning about truth tables. 
truth tables are a powerful tool that allows us to analyze an argument for validity and other relationships. Then, formal proofs of validity are ways of deducing the conclusion from the premise. Whereas truth tables can show an argument to be valid or invalid, formal proofs of validity show how the conclusion is derived from the premises. Pretty cool. Truth trees are another powerful tool that we can use to analyze arguments and analyze propositional statements. Finally, digital logic is a powerful modern day application of the things we're going to learn in the other parts of these lessons. You're going to enjoy intermediate logic. And even if you don't, it's going to teach you to think in new and different ways. We have a ton to cover, so I'm going to cut that off right here.